Hello again and thank you and welcome to another episode of Everyday Black History. Now today we're going to be highlighting again a man by the name of Harold Amos. And Harold Amos was a scientist, an educator, a mentor, and a professor who taught at Harvard University, one of, our, one of America's leading um, Ivy League institutions. Now, now Harold Amos uh, was born in New Jersey, the second of nine children. His father, um, uh, Howard Amos Sr., worked at a Philadelphia post office, and his mother, who was friends with a prominent Philadelphia Quaker family, provided Howell with a lot of books, many books uh, during his young age. They kept him supplied with books, and that stimulated Harold's interest in science. He received his education in segregated schools in Pensacola, New Jersey, then graduated first in his class from Camden High School, New Jersey. At the high school, he at this high school graduation in 1936, he is, he attended Springfield College in Springfield, Massachusetts, on a full academic scholarship. At a time when very few scholarships were offered to African Americans, he graduated summa cum laude in 1941 with a major in biography and a minor in chemistry. The following year, he worked as a graduate assistant in the biology department at Springfield College. After being drafted and serving in World War II and returning home in the fall of 1946, Harold Amos enrolled in uh, the Biological Sciences graduate program within the Division of Medical Sciences at Harvard Medical School, and he earned an MA in 1947 and a PhD in 1952, becoming the first African American to earn a doctoral degree from the division. Um, Harold Amos remained an active faculty member at the Harvard Medical School for nearly 50 years, rising through the academic ranks, becoming a full professor in 1969. In 1975, he was named the Maud and Lillian Presley Professor of Microbiology and Molecular Genetics and became Professor Emeritus in 1988. Twice from 1968 to 1971, and again from 75 to 78, he served as the chair of the department, thus becoming the first African American to head a department at Harvard Medical School. He also served twice as chair of the Division of Medical Sciences from 71 to 75 and from 78 to 88. And in these roles, he provided creative, forward-thinking leadership with fairness, with fairness and diplomacy. Now, Harold Amos was known to be a mentor to many of his students and many of the, the, the uh, other professors that worked with him and under him. And he described teaching as one of his greatest joys. He was always known, um, as, as said by people who worked with him, to offer words of praise, encouragement, and support to many of his students and fellow teachers and that he also followed his students' careers and personal lives with enthusiasm. It was said that his door, the door to his office was always open, and he always welcomed drop-in visitors. And because of his accomplishments, um, he, he, was, he held many leadership positions on national boards and committees, and, and he served as, a, um, as an inspiration to many uh, people in the medical field coming up behind him. As part of his interest in expanding the participation of members of underrepresented minorities in research, he was an early advocate of the National Institute of Health's programs for minority college students. He also um, dedicated he also was dedicated to the advancements of science as well as those serving the interests of minority students. Uh, Harold Amos was the recipient of many awards um, dating back to the 70s. Um, uh, many of them based in the science in the science realm, the honoris causa doctorio degree. He was awarded from Harvard University in 1996. I hope I'm saying that right. The Centennial Medal Award of Harvard Graduate School of Arts and Sciences of Arts and Sciences, the Charles Drew World Medical Prize from Harvard University, the National Academy of Science of Sciences highest honor, the Public Welfare Medal, and many many more awards. He was awarded. Um, and even though he had all these awards and all these accomplishments, he was said to be a modest man. And many people didn't even know the full range of awards and honors he was given. Even upon his retirement at the age of, of 70, when he was in his 70s, he accepted the position 
as the first national director of the Minority Medical Faculty Development Program of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, in which he served until 1994. It was said that he developed a reputation for keeping in contact with and encouraging the, um, the Minority Medical Faculty Development Program fellows and their family members long after their tenure in the program. Even after they left the program and graduated, he still kept in touch with them and still encouraged them. He also encouraged them to seek alternative positions. He also encouraged um, the seeking of, um, he also sought alternative positions for applicants who were not awarded fellowships who applied for the MMFDP program, the Minority Medical Facility Development Program. In 2004, the program was renamed the Howell Amos Medical Facility Development Program in honor of him after his death. Unfortunately, Harold Amos died February 26, 2003, um, after suffering a stroke. But even a few days before his death, he was still working full-time in the laboratory of, of his longtime friend, Jack Murphy, at Boston University, and was still writing two manuscripts on um, glycerol metabolism. So even until the day he died, he was still a hard-working man, still, um, you know, you know, um, increasing his mind and pushing his discoveries forward. So, Harold Amos, we thank you for your contribution to black history and black culture, and we salute you. Now, that concludes this episode of Everyday Black History. We ask you to um, continue to tune in as we have more people and institutions that we'll be highlighting.